Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian. How guys doing today? Welcome to a brand new video. In today's video, guys, we're going to be doing something that's quite out of the ordinary. Basically, today, guys, I decided I'm going to do a reaction to something that is just blowing up right now to try and get some YouTube clout. And I actually think I can also provide some interesting commentary to this. In today's video, guys, I'm going to be reacting to Andrew Tate and his takes on the Russia-Ukraine situation. Now, guys, for those of you who are not aware who Andrew Tate is, he's essentially like a ex-kickboxer, MMA guy, whatever, one of those types turned like a podcaster essentially and media personality a youtuber of sorts to be quite honest i don't know that much about Tate. i've seen some of his clips but not that much i haven't really watched him and i just know that he's blowing up right now like crazy i know he's kind of like a red pill you know self-improvement gym motivation guy who also talks about you know shallow women and you know gives off these based red pill anti-feminist takes or whatever and i don't want to claim this Tate guy is like super misogynistic and everything because i don't know that much about him but uh honestly my most misogynistic friend they love him so uh, I think that says something but yeah recently one of my friends told me that I should make a video reacting to Andrew Tate's takes on Russia and Ukraine and uh, I was like really he has takes on Russia and Ukraine that should be interesting and actually I kind of don't know what to expect I mean I kind of do with the fact that he's like a red pill guy so but I'm basically going into this blind just like you guys so let's go you know let's see what Andrew Tate's uh, nuanced take on Russia and Ukraine will be and uh, I'm sure it's gonna be great we're gonna talk about Ukraine this is awful, man. This is already bad. Do you know, Tristan, do you even know who this week's certified G is? I, I think I do. I think I do. Because we spoke about it today and we said, ooh, he should be certified G. And obviously I do no preparation for this. None of this is scripted, by the way. This is an unscripted show. But I know who the certified G is because we've been fans of this guy for a long motherfucking time. <laughs> okay, bro. Boom. <laughs> he's, Boom. He's, he's just like... I want it, I'll take it. Nah, the dick hitting crazy, bruh. Okay, so... <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm still a little sick, so I'm coughing like a bastard. So that's like the take they're going for, I guess. I mean, I thought I actually expected something more mild, honestly. I know since they're red pill guys, they'd probably be like, you know, oh, you know, the media lies to you. It's not all like one-sided and everything. Or they would say some shit like, you know, this would not have happened if Trump was president. You know, that's type of shit. But uh, no, they just straight up say, you know, we're fans of Putin and Putin is base as fuck. Yeah, bro, of course. And thing is, guys, as a Russian citizen, I can't even really uh, rebuke this because I can't quite out say what this guy does that doesn't make him a certified G, but uh, you know what this guy does and what he's done in the recent months that uh, makes him anything but a certified G, I feel like. But uh, let's keep going. Give me it. Well, it is just, and the historical context and the law. No, 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 no. I didn't ask you about historical context or law or lines on a map. Give me that. Cause you I don't want it. Because you know, when I go to Ukraine, I've got a similar attitude. <laughs> bro this is awful how can you compare invasion of a country with uh going to a country and uh having sex with the women there because that's what he's doing he's like putin's going to ukraine he wants to take stuff when i go to ukraine i also want to take stuff bro i want to get these ukrainian bitches bro i cannot with this shit. <laughs> bro i cannot deal with this man i cannot take this seriously oh no this is maybe the biggest reason ever this actually scares me to watch the video i might duck and hide andrew hit it luckily it's not a video it's just He's friends with he's fr Aikido. Aikido! You're going to go up to the Kremlin and say, you can't do that because there's this line on a map. And I don't know. I think, I think he can do it if he wants. And you're like, who's that? And you turn to the left. You turn to the right. You see nobody. And then you come face forward. And it's Jack Cole, Casey Ryback, Steven Seagal himself in your face, front kicking you. Bro, Steven Seagal sucks, man. He's so fucking fat, bro. <laughs> What's on the, uh, the, the queue is uh, Asian Connection. Which I want to watch with him. Uh, what a fucking retarded name. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what the connection is yeah. in that. What, it, what it's, it's referring to. It's the connection to. between Steven Seagal and the dialysis machine. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Seagal sucks, bro. Okay, so well, I guess this video is not serious. They just talk about, you know, you know, it's basically like, you know, those videos you find on YouTube, like, based epic Putin, Putin being badass compilations, where, you know, it's like him going into one of these, like, uh, governmental companies where he's, like, pretending to be harsh on people for corruption option and shit but i think andrew tate has more nuanced stakes in ukraine that's what i actually want to see let's let's check it out i'm gonna go full conspiracy theory on all of you okay putin was wef along with trudeau and the rest i don't believe any of this shit yes there's a war but in war it's always the peasants and the peons and the civilians that die right 
So what Putin's done is he's mobilized a bunch of fucking Mongols and, and fucking Eskimos, Chechens, Chechens, people without social media, miles away, miles away a bunch of 20 year olds, told them they're on a military exercise, put them on a military exercise, then told them they were attacked and sent them into fucking Ukraine. They don't even know what they're doing. Most Russians don't even know what's going on. Yeah, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. People know what's going on, man. And what does this mean? That's like, uh, it's like less tragic if it's loss of human life, if it's like not Russians, but it's like a bunch of Mongols and Eskimos or whatever. Because that's the thing you gotta realize about, uh, you know, the current events. I'm obviously not a supporter of the uh, special military operation, right? But one thing I cannot really vibe with, and I see this a lot on like Reddit and shit, on the internet period, on the western side of the internet, is that like, there's all these people like making fun of like soldiers on from the Russian side, like dying and shit. I've seen like videos on Reddit of like, videos of like Russian soldiers getting killed and it has like, you know, funny moments music on top of it, like sneaky snitch type shit. I was like watching this and I was like, what the fuck is this? This is insane. This is real people being murdered, you know? So yeah, I think dehumanizing soldiers from a certain side completely, I understand they do bad shit, but dehumanizing all of them completely, that's not like, a, that's like a slippery slope in my opinion. But he's not even like on that side. He's not, he doesn't even care about Ukraine, right? But then he's like, oh, Putin sends a bunch of Mongols and Eskimos. Who cares, right? I don't know, bro. This is like kind of a strange take. Another thing as well is that the soldiers getting sent into Ukraine are usually contract soldiers. And then like, if you live in basically bumfuck nowhere in Russia, where there's like no opportunities, no jobs, nothing, one of the only social lifts, like one of the only ways to make it and make any money is like join a contract army for males. So this is why I love the Russian soldiers in Ukraine seem to be from these poor random republics, because they literally have nothing else to do in the republic but to join the contract army. But... And not to sound too crazy, Alex Jones, seven months ago, said Russia's going to invade Ukraine in February. Alex so, Jones! He's, he's, bro, it's all video! And he's been proven right. He's before. been proven right over and over again. He goes, don't worry, there's going to be a big thing in February, World War III, to distract us. <laughs> From what, bro? Distract from what? Roe v. Wade? What, like, what, what is the World War III supposed to distract you from? That's like the main thing that could happen. World War III, bro. I like how Alex Jones fans are always like, Alex Jones is that type of person who has been wrong 99% of the time in his entire media career. But the 1%, he like suddenly gets it right. People are like, look at this. We told you, man. He was right all along. No, he wasn't. He was bullshitting for 99% of the time. And one time he got it fucking right, man. Tell it to the fucking parents of the children in Sandy Hook. Tell him Alex Jones was right about this shit. You know who also said it besides Alex Jones? Zhirinovsky, Vladimir Zhirinovsky. He's like a Russian politician that died quite recently, actually. He said that something is gonna start on 4 a.m. February uh, 22nd, 2022. And it started on 4 a.m. February 24th, 2022. He also said that like six months prior to it or something. And like nobody cared because he's like an outrageous guy who always says crazy shit, you know? So yeah, how can you take this guy seriously, man? He's bringing Alex Jones into this. Is, are they trying to distract us from the COVID crimes the last few years? Is it because the international banking system- Wait, what? Sorry, sorry, hold on. COVID crimes of the last two years? Yeah, so I guess he's a COVID denier as well. Fair. <laughs> I cannot explain how not surprised I am, you know? Is it because the international banking system's fucked? Is it because inflation's out of control? Oh, yeah. do, do they need this war for some reason? Because I am at the point now where I have so little faith in politics. I believe there's somebody above Ukraine and above Putin <laughs> who's made a call to both of them and said, you're the good guy, you're the bad guy. Go. We need this now. Go. Send some people to get blown up. Some idiots that no one has a Facebook account for. No one's going to know they're gone because we all live on the internet, no one with an Instagram. Send them to fucking go die, and we're gonna call some issues, so we have an excuse for inflation, and the banking system failing, and the dollar failing, and all the COVID lies, and everyone getting sick from the vaccine we made them take, oh and every fucking fucking Oh my god, Jesus, wow, okay. He's saying there's somebody above Ukraine and above Putin who's, you know, running all the uh, puppy strings. Bro, this guy is this close to saying this to Jews. Like, I swear to God, he's this close, bro. And off camera, a thousand percent, he does think that. No question about it. No question about it. But anyway, no, bro, he's petting, though. You know what I mean? I, I was 
was actually, I was actually, um, I was just getting high with my friends recently here in Georgia, and we were like, we actually were joking about this, like, uh, so you know how, like, the main, like, uh, letter that, like, the propaganda uses in Russia, and also the letter that's, like, on Russian military vehicles is Z, right? Bro, just imagine, just imagine if the letter they chose for that instead of Z was Q. Nah, it's over, bro. Imagine if... <laughs> Imagine if Russian military vehicles had Q on it. Holy shit, it'll be all- America would be imploded in a second. I don't know why they didn't do it, bro. If Putin's goal is to fuck up America, she, she should have done Q, bro. And I feel like this is Andrew Tate's take, basically. It's- there's somebody above this running the strings to distract you from the COVID lies and from the inflation and from uh, the global banking system being fucked up. Yeah, I wonder why it's fucked up, bro. Maybe it's capitalism. Maybe that's why, I don't know, but you're, uh, you'd never realize that, would you? I really am at that point now where I have no faith in any of it. I'm not saying the war isn't happening, but I'm saying the reason they're telling us is fucking bullshit. I agree. Why is Putin just invading Ukraine to the point now, trying to take Kiev? To what end? To what end? He ain't gonna be able to take Kiev without massive civilian casualties. He's gonna, no one's gonna accept it. The Russian populace won't accept it. Half of them have fucking cousins in Kiev. The Russian military won't accept it, a lot of them. The Russian, most Russian soldiers from Moscow won't fucking attack Kiev, attack the Kiev building. You need some Eskimo idiot. None of this makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Russians have a lot of cousins, relatives, like... The countries of Ukraine and Russia are very intertwined by family ties and everything, obviously. But, uh, I mean, I'm literally, like, half Ukrainian. I never talked about this on my channel, but, yeah, like, like half of my family essentially comes from Ukraine from, like, three generations ago or something, so... But that's not really how it works. It's absolutely clear that Andrew Tate has no idea of, like, the way Russian propaganda works inside Russia, how it antagonizes Ukraine, how it, you know, paints the picture of the entirety of Ukraine as being, like, you know, full of Nazis or whatever, how effective it is and how effective, you know, the suppression of media and, you know, free speeches and everything. He has no idea and he doesn't give a fuck quite frankly because he's an american who's america centric of course bro this just shows to me that like americans don't give a fuck about anybody except themselves because they think that a real conflict happening between russia and ukraine real lives being affected is all there to cover up for the dollar being inflated or whatever. You just think everything is done to cover up some shit in America. And this guy just basically says that it won't make any sense for Putin to be like annoyed at Ukraine or whatever. You just don't know any history. Like, this has been a process that's been going on for the last 15 years at least. That's the last 20 years or something. It didn't just suddenly start. I mean, it's just very clear that this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, but he's, yet he's given his enlightened take. And these dumbass motherfuckers who are fans of this, they, they, they follow this shit. They, they think he's base as fuck. This is an excellent summary by Mr. Tate. A lot of layers to this machination. Thanks for posting, respect. Tate hits the nail on the head once again. Bro, this is just so dumb, honestly. I think there's one more video actually, let's check it out. Are actually pretty much the good guys in the world. I think that the, if we're talking about Russia in general, my scope on the world and my, my view on the world is, has been shaped by my father's view. My father was obviously American intelligence, so I guess I should be very, very pro-West, but when you look at the world for what it actually genuinely is, I believe the Russians have had a pretty hard deal. And I believe that in the West, we are sold and we are told that the Russians are always the bad guys. The Russians are doing the bad guy, bad thing in Syria. The Russians are doing this bad. The Russians are doing that bad. When in reality, we do the bad things. We funded a whole bunch of groups in Syria, so they fight ISIS. Those groups are fighting ISIS and the legitimate government and fuck knows who else, because we don't know who they're fighting. And Russia's just blowing up anyone who's not the government. I agree with Russia, I think they're doing the right thing. We talk about Russia being aggressive because they annexed Crimea. But if you look at the post-USSR world, who's been aggressive? The USSR had all these countries. Yeah, bro. I mean, I don't even watch the one that watched this whole thing because I know these takes. I know them down to the teeth because I actually have a lot of fans that feel like this. And I actually made a video addressing these types of people like two years ago called uh, Stop Idolizing Russia, which is a really good a video, I think. Even though it was kind of ad-libbed, it was like freestyle that video. But I was basically talking about this, how people think that Russia is not only like the bastion of free speech and the free world or whatever, which is not. But usually these people who think that like Russia is in the rights and it's like uh, not doing anything wrong, essentially, these people are usually conservative and uh it logically comes down to the fact that russia they think that russia is like a bastion of conservative hope in the world uh when the west is being destroyed by feminazis and uh, sjw's russia is doing the right thing they're keeping the tradition alive you know which is bullshit and also yeah they think russia has is full of like you know trad wives that will do anything and uh whatever i have a whole video about that you can watch it if you want to but I, i've seen the takes that this guy is spitting for years and uh it's an extremely skewed dumb worldview that only comes from people on the right
rights in America who are closed-minded. Not every person on the right in America thinks like this, by the way. There's plenty of people on the right in America who actually denounce what Russia is doing and stuff, but a lot of them are actually like, you know, trying to be contrarian so bad that they end up simping for Putin in Russia and they just go, you know, the dick eating is crazy, bro. I'm gonna call this motherfucker Andrew Zate with the way he's speaking right now, bro. This motherfucker is Andrew Zate. You know what I mean? <laughs> And yet this worldview and this view of Russia is like a bastion of conservative hope and whatever. It comes from a very America-centric, uh, right-wing, sort of conservative American stance. When you basically look at the entirety of the world through the scope of like American Democrat versus Republican dichotomy, and you see Russia through that, and you think that the good guys in there, you know, on the same side as you, when they're definitely not. So yeah, I don't think there's really any point for me to debunk every single statement he made in this video. Literally just watch my video, Stop Analyzing Russia, I think it's pretty good. And it covers basically everything he says in this video. But yeah, yeah, quite honestly, this just gives me a lot of insight in into what kind of person Andrew Tate really is. Because, like, I knew he had, like, kind of, like, a red pill outlook on, like, you know, male self-improvements or, like, relationships with women or whatever. And, of course, he gave off, like, right-wing vibes. But now that I see this, now he's talking about Alex Jones, bro. He's, like, he thinks that Russian Putin is cool. I mean, I know what the fuck this guy is on and what kind of, like, you know, Kool-Aid he's drinking. So, yeah, Andrew Zate's take on Russia unhinged and cringe. And, uh, maybe, in fact, some of you guys who are watching this video right now, you might be actually fans of Andrew Tate. And if you're like a pro-Ukraine person or whatever, if you watch this, this actually might shatter your worldview a little bit, because that's what happened to me, you know? Before I got to have the opinions and politics that I have right now, I'm kind of like a social democrat, you know, more of a left-wing guy, I say. I used to be like a hardcore, like, red pill, anti-SJW, like, conservative kind of. I thought Trump was cool and shit, that was like in 2016 and stuff. And I watched a lot of red pill YouTube. I watched, like, Paul Joseph Watson, you know, Ben Shapiro. And one thing that actually turned me away from, uh, you know, being, like, conservative is realizing how much of the people who I was watching are completely insane and I actually don't agree with a lot of their takes. For example, for me, it was mostly the fact that a lot of the conservatives, I mean, mainly the conservative opinion is very anti-abortion. And I was never anti-abortion in my entire life, honestly. I don't know why. I just never thought of it as anything bad. So, I thought I was conservative, but then I saw how anti-abortion every conservative is and that actually kind of made me start changing my take and I was slowly realizing how much of the shit that, like, my favorite conservative conservative YouTubers are saying it's complete nonsense. That doesn't really align with my deep held convictions, you know, you know what I mean? So maybe this video will actually do it for you guys. Maybe if you're fans of Andrew Tate and you think his take on, you know, women or whatever are base as fuck, and if you support Ukraine, maybe now you will see how this man simps for Putin and Russia and you'll be like, hmm, why does he do that? And I'm trying to tell to you guys, it's not because it's his problem in particular. No, this is just the overall conservative mindset. The, the majority of the people like Andrew Tate will be simping for Russia and Putin, so yeah. And yeah, guys, I think I covered the entire topic pretty well. I think this is gonna be pretty much it for today's video, though. If you guys did enjoy this video, go ahead and slap that like button on it. As well, guys, go over to the link down in the description to my Patreon. I actually got my access to it back and can actually get paid by Patreon again. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still sick. My voice is, like, leaving my body. I'm barely, like, talking at this point. So, yeah, you can donate on Patreon if you want to, uh, to support me additionally. And, yeah, guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for today's video, though, when I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.